session for a few minutes. So please accept our apologies. Um, calling to order the uh, zoning hearing board for Radnor Township for April 21st, 2011. We have uh, four, four pieces of administrative um, information here. Um, appeal, uh, appeal 1856. No, it's, I don't know what appeal number is. Um, no, I'm doing the, uh, it's, uh, Yeah, 2852, appeal 2852. Uh, this is for 600 Newtown Road, Villanova. Dear Matt, as you know, I represent the above. The zoning hearing board is scheduled for April 21st, 2011. At the request of the applicant, kindly withdraw this application for consideration by the board. If anyone is here for that appeal, it has been withdrawn. Um, appeal 2844, appeal of Eastern University. Um, receives a letter for an extension. Dear John, the purpose of this letter is to request that the zoning hearing board continue the zoning hearing on the above scheduled for April 21st, 2011 to the next scheduled zoning board hearing on May 19th, 2011. All of the parties are in agreement for this continuance. As you may recall, that I had advised the board that an additional continuance from the March 17th, 2011 hearing may be required due to the possibility of the unavailability of a party opponent. I have been informed that the party is in fact unavailable due to a planned vacation. In the prior letter for the continuous, I agreed to extend the time if the matter was again continued. As a result, the applicant confirms that letter and agrees to extend the time when the board can hear this matter to May 19th, 2011, and further agrees that a written decision will not be required until 45 days after the rescheduled hearing date. Thank you for your time and consideration. Nicholas Cantaglia. Nick, did I see you here? I'm here, yeah. Okay, do you have anything you want to say? Um, I have nothing else to add to it. Um, I know you have a busy agenda, that meeting. If you do decide to do two hearings uh, during that time period, I would agree to extend the time uh, to that second hearing okay. as well and 45 days beyond that second hearing. I'm not certain what you're going to do with the with yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. We haven't gotten that schedule. Yeah, we, we may have a big agenda and okay. either we'll have a long night. The other thing we can do is we can, uh, you know, just we don't have to hear an entire case if we're running out of time. We've done that. Okay. But uh, appreciate that. And uh, uh, one of the things that the, the docket looks really big, and I might shoot an email to you and maybe you and uh, if we're going to thinking of a special hearing uh, I assume we could you know schedule it you know with reasonable dispatch and I would expect okay. you and the other parties would uh, concur with that okay okay, okay with everyone Pete yeah. no right okay thank you thank you um, appeal number 2815 the Radnor fire company Metro PCS 2815 it says 15 here. 2851, dear Mr. Ryan, per our discussion, please note that the applicant requested continuous from the April 21st, 2011 zoning hearing board hearing agenda and further request that this matter be placed on the May 19th, 2011 agenda. The continuance is requested to try and work out any remaining issues with the Radnor School District. Please note that the applicants waive all requirements of the Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Code that mandate the time frame for which a township to conduct a hearing in this matter. This waiver is in effect until May 20th, 2011. Also, the 45-day time period to render a written decision is extended in line with all new hearing dates. As discussed, I will attend the April 21st. Should the board have any follow-up questions, please thank you for this consideration in this matter. Mr. Cucci. Hi, good evening. Um, essentially, uh, I have nothing further to add than what is in the letter. Uh, we are. Uh, just looking to shore up any loose ends, if we can, uh, with the school district. Uh, but I, I am fairly, uh, I'm cautiously optimistic that we will be moving forward on the 19th. We'd be amenable in case we do have to split the times. We will let you know that. Okay. Understood. Thank you very, very much. And then the, 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 your letter does have 2815. The reference should be 2851 in terms of the appeal. Oh, is that okay? Right. I must have gotten that off okay. of something. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Noah. Fine. Fine. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sure, it's Couche. It's C U C E. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. I messed up my French. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
the last the last one is um, an appeal number 2829 uh, dear Matt please find and close a check for $100 towards the application for act 46 extension building zoning permit for the Franklin residence at 1 Forest Road Wayne Pennsylvania um, under Act 46, they have 30 days to respond, so we would have to do that tonight. Unfortunately, they didn't completely issue the proper uh, extension request, so I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Ryan to contact um, the uh, Franklins to make sure that they do it properly so that we can expedite this matter. Yeah, what I would recommend is that the board agree to you know, defer action on this pending uh, to the May meeting pending receipt of a of a of an act 46 request that complies the, with the requirements of this of act 46 okay okay does everyone agree with that good um, gets down to the one thing we have left tonight appeal 2853 the applicants Chris and Caroline Gagliardi located at 207 Midland Avenue Wayne Pennsylvania 19087 and is zoned R3. Seek to expand the residence, which is a non-conforming structure, in R3 because it does not comply with the side yard requirements of the section 28025D1. Applicant requests a determination that their additions are permitted by right under section 28101B1 because they will not increase the existing side yard non-conformity and will create no new non-conformity. In the alternative, applicant requests a special exception under section 28101A2 on the grounds that the additions are a limited extension to a non-conforming building. Mr. Chairman. Your turn, sir. Uh, Jim Greenfield for the applicants. Give the plan. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I you know one we we this board has always treated 101B1 as a special exception request, uh, and to the extent that the board proceeds under 101B1, I would treat it as a special exception. Uh, they've already requested special exception relief, so I don't think there's any issue with whether the notice needs to be republished. I agree. I agree. And the special exception is re is requested under 101A2. And 101A2 is not applicable because that would require under sub C that the extension of the building conform to the setback regulations. Yeah, but th that's in, that's if we get there. No, I'm saying the, the, yeah. the request for special exception is not specifically only an exception under 280101A2 under the application. The applicant requests a special exception under 280101A2. They haven't asked for a special exception under B. Have they? Um, I think they asked, they said they thought it was by right. They, they said it, it's, the additions are permitted by right under section 28101B1. And under 28101B1, that means um, no increase of the existing nonconformity. But in the alternative, he wants a special exception under 280A2, right? Yeah, but A, that's right, but A2. Right, that's, that's if he doesn't, that's if he doesn't, we don't think that 28101 is in existence. Yeah, well, the point is, though, he, his, his, the request, uh, in fairness, on 101B1 was of, run of right. Uh, you're taking the position that it's of right. Uh, we've taken the position, I assume we'll continue to take the position, that if 101B1 applies, it's by special that's exception. Right. I think the issue for uh, uh, the, the, you know, the whole uh, Glen Gary and Luke B. Cataldi and their progeny on proper publication is whether the real scope of relief has accurately, you know, generic, been, been at least reasonably accurately disclosed. Uh, if they need a variance, then the special exception request is not good enough, and I would urge that we'd have to re-advertise. But unless the board concludes they need a variance, I think having mentioned special exception once while maybe not as precisely as it you know, might have been by tying it directly to 101B1, I think would be good enough uh, uh, for this board to proceed. I, Mr. Cutler, I can tell you that I completely agree with you uh, if you suggest that A2 would, would not be as applicable as B1. That's always been my position on these, and I've handled several of these. The board has routinely granted these as special exceptions under A2. 
So I'm, I'm trying to uh, follow what I understand to be the precedent of many years standing. Before well, the the reason I'm raising the issue is I'm trying to figure out what your burden of going forward with evidence is, what your burden of proof would be. Right. And it seems to me that under 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 A2 you wouldn't qualify because under sub C you're not uh, complying with existing uh, setback requirements in your addition. So A2 wouldn't be applicable. So I'm just trying to, for, for our sake to, to narrow down the issues, which section are we proceeding under? It's, it can't be A2. Because if you look at their plans, they're not planning to build an addition that will comply with the, uh, the setback requirements as they now exist. Again, I, I think what Mr. Ryan is telling you is that these cases have routinely been handled under A2 for many years. And I, you know, I've had several of them. Uh, as, a, as evidence tonight, we're going to give you a decision uh, in which this board granted uh, a sim almost identical relief for the property directly across the driveway to my clients at 205 Midland. Uh, and, uh, you know, so there's, there are a lot of these. I mean, I've, particularly in Wayne, where the properties begin as nonconforming. Uh, on, a, on a regular basis, there are a lot of these situations where the property owners want to extend their homes but do not exacerbate the existing nonconformity by going any further into the side yard than, than the existing house goes. And they're, they're, they are granted as A2 special exceptions. Uh, I always thought they were granted as 101B1s. Uh, when it's a conforming use, the use is conforming and it's a building that's violating a dimensional requirement that there's non-conforming. I've always written those up as, as 101B1s. Uh, but 10B1 doesn't say anything about special exceptions. Yeah, well, I, I, I understand that. Uh, it has been the long-standing, you know, uh, I mean, one can argue that it's inclusion in this, uh, uh, you know, which, you know the, the words are supplied, but frankly, for, you know, it's a, it's a long-standing uh, practice that goes way, way, way back before I, I, was, I, I got here uh, in 2000 to treat these as special exceptions. And I think that that's uh, supported by case law such as the Grubb Appeal, which was uh, technically a variance, but really stands for the proposition that you ought to be able to, in many situations anyway, to square off uh, a uh, non-conforming uh, uh, intrusion into the yard. So I think that... Uh, this uh, isn't a square-off case, though, John. Excuse me. This is an addition. This is not squaring off... Yeah, I, I understand. But this is an I entirely understand. new and that's, projection. Yeah, but the, the we've said B would, one would allow that. The question, question would be whether B1 allows that of right or whether it allows it of a special exception. It's the township's uh, uh, long-standing practice to... Uh, 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 require that by special exception. Uh, if that's a wrong practice, then the, they're entitled to do it by right without be, being here at all. Uh, and I'm sure Mr. Greenfield wants to preserve the of right feature, but the fact of the matter is that these have been processed as special exceptions, and generally they're pretty routine cases. So I always felt that we did the A, 280-101A dealt more with use, yes. and B deals with dimensional issues. Precisely. So I, I agree. I, so A2, I don't really, you're not changing the use. No. And no, the use I, is legal. No one's and, and, and the legal. use is legal. So I, I don't know where A would, would come into play so much because you're not, you're not really altering the use. You're really just altering the dimensions and you're not increasing the existing nonconformity. By right. any, you know, you're not increasing impervious so that it's going to go over. Right, you're going to stay under the permitted impervious area or any other issues, the side yard or rear yard. You're not going to increase the side yard. Correct. And you're not going to encroach on the rear yard or the front yard. We're creating no new nonconformities. We're only staying within the existing nonconformity. That's right. That's why we think B1 does apply. Yeah, and as, as to the extent B1 does apply, uh, my advice to the ward, right or wrong, is that that's a special exception case under 101. Yeah, I, I think we've always looked at it as a special exception. So. Yes. Well, you know our position, but we're okay. happy to proceed. Okay, that very way. good. That's Thank you, Mr. Okay. okay. Um, I, I can call, uh, we have the plan up. I hope can you can see that. Um, I hope everyone has a copy of the plan. We would uh, ask that the application package be marked as A1. Okay, and, and uh, the plan is, is that? Uh, yeah, the, the, the application 
package as a deed. It's got photos. Uh, the plan, we might want to label the components of your application because uh, if relief is granted, it's going to be granted pursuant to the plan, and the plan should be a separate. I, I, think, yeah, I think we'll make the plan A2. That's fine. Okay, the application package is yeah. one, and the plan is A2. Yep. Yeah, that's great. Okay. What you'll see under the plan is that the um, addition is the proposed addition is to the rear of the house. The the uh, requirements in R three is that you have uh, two side yards, aggregate thirty five feet. I think the minimum is fifteen. We comply on the uh, east side of the house, but not on the west side, where the uh, existing side yard is ten point three feet. The proposed addition at the rear of the house uh, <clears throat> is on that west side and goes no further into the side yard than uh, the existing house does. It will be flush with the existing house and will also observe a side yard of 10.3 feet. Uh, it's 11 by 18, correct? Uh, let me, let me uh, have Chris Gallardi sworn as a witness and he can tell you about what he wants to do back there. Chris Galliardi. Uh, Chris, uh, what is it that you uh, want to do with this addition? Uh, it's an, an addition to an existing. Me, can you speak sure, it's a an addition to an existing kitchen, and it will uh, allow us to move the bathroom out of the kitchen, where it currently is. It's a it's really an unsanitary condition to have a bathroom in the kitchen, so it allow us to move that out. It allows us to create some closet space because there's no uh, closet space in the kitchen right now. Uh, there's a, a half closet that's used for shoes, but we need room for kids' bags, sports equipment, and so forth. So it gives us a closet area as well, and then a, um, an area to put a pantry closet because we need uh, additional closet space in the kitchen. Why is it that you propose the addition in that exact location at the rear of the house on the west side? Um, it, it's the simplest way to um, add square footage to the kitchen um, and specifically without creating any additional impervious coverage than what we have today. Is, there, is, this, is the area uh, con presently concreted or something where you're proposing to put the addition? It is, yes, except for a small band of area that's maybe a foot to a half, a, a foot to a foot and a half wide uh, against the house and that runs about maybe eight feet. But your, your testimony is that the, when, when this project is done, you will not exceed the 35% limit, and you'll come in at 34.91%. That is correct. Years. That is correct. Is the patio there now? Uh, the patio? The brick patio? Yes, it is. Okay. How far away are you from the garage now since you're extended? Uh, before the addition? Oh, uh, before the addition. Now you didn't you didn't encroach on that, right? The, the separation isn't it ten feet or how many feet is it from? I don't think they're anywhere close. No, no I, mean, I don't know if this is actually way beyond yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, I believe it's. Um, oh, okay. Uh, this is go. Yeah, well, you're more than 10 40 feet. Yeah, I was going to say it looks right. like about at least twenty-eight or thirty feet. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Right, any questions, Noah, Pete? Mr. Uh, Mr. Gallardi, have you consulted with uh, your next door neighbor across the driveway at 205? Yeah, as uh, Mr. Greenfield stated, um, we right share right. a driveway with our neighbors at 205 Midland. Um, they did nearly an uh, identical addition in their backyard uh, about a year and a half, two years ago. And I did consult with them to ensure that they had no issues with our addition, and they did uh, provide us with a signed documented letter stating that they have no concerns or issues with our should we um, introduce that as a three yes you know, let, me, I'll, let me just I only have one copy unfortunately so let me just show that to the witness get him to identify it and then I'll hand it up mr. Gallardi looking at exhibit a three is this the letter you received from your next door neighbors yes it is okay 
Mr. Gagliardi, the only relief, and Mr. Greenfield, the only relief you're requesting is a side yard. You're not requesting relief from any other dimensional provisions of the zoning code. That's correct. And if approval were granted, that could be inserted in the order. That's right. I would also like to hand up to you the decision rendered by this board in the appeal of the Lockhart's, the next door neighbors at 205, on December 18th, 2008, in appeal number 2800. And the same relief was given in that case under 28101B. So I'll hand that one up to you. This will be A4. If you have an extra copy of that, I'll take it. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. This was a front yard one, not a side yard. Well, that's what it says. Yeah, I think that's a mistake. That must have been a typo. That is a mistake. That's a typo. It was a side yard because that would be D. Yes, it should be D. Okay. This next one is going to be A5. I just have some pictures in color to hand up as exhibits, and then we'll be finished. Okay. These are the same ones that are in black and white, correct? Yes. Is anyone going to read the neighbor's letter so we know what it says when we vote? I thought he read it. No, we haven't seen it. I thought he read it. No, he just identified it. I'll read the letter in the record. To whom it may concern, April 20, 2011, we're fully aware of the zoning variance request submitted by our joining neighbors at 207 Midland Avenue and have no issues with the Gagliardi plans for an addition to the rear of their home. Please accept this letter as our understanding of their intentions for this addition and that we have no concerns associated with their request for a variance to proceed with construction. Sincerely, Ron and Lisa Lockhart, 205 Midland Avenue, Wayne, Pennsylvania. It's actually Ray. Ray? Okay. Okay. I'm going to hand up one other picture, which will be A6, and then I'll ask the witness to identify both of these pictures. Can you tell me what exhibit A5 is, please? A5 is the front of my home, and on top and on the bottom, it's the rear, where the addition would go. Okay. And what is A6? A6 is the shared driveway side view of my neighbor's home, including the full structure with the addition that was implemented in the last year or two. Any further questions from the board? Excuse me, what was A6 again? The second photograph, the single photograph. That's, yeah, A5. A5 has two photographs. Yeah, I know. What is this up? You want to answer that, Chris? Sure. A6 is the side view of my neighbor's home at 205 Midland. This is a shared driveway home and shows the view of the full extent of their side, including the addition on the rear that was granted in the last year or two. So that's the house that was covered by appeal number 2800, right? Correct. Anything else from the board? Any other questions? Okay. Anyone in the audience have anything that they want to add or speak on this issue? Mr. Greenfield, you want to move the? We move the admission of all our exhibits, and we ask that the board rule that we're entitled to either approval by right or a special exception under B1. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Pete. Uh, I vote that we approve it as a special exception under 28101B1 uh, because they will not increase the existing side yard nonconformity and they will not uh, and they will remain in compliance with all other aspects of the zoning code. Brian? In favor. Noah? Yeah, I'm in favor, of it, but I wanted to note that, that with all due respect to the past practices of the board, that I think they're entitled to it as a matter of right under 28101B1. So I'm, no, in, I'm in favor of, uh, of approving what they're doing, but I don't think they need a variance to do okay. it. A special exception. A special exception. Okay, I, I agree. Very good. Thank you. Thank um, you. No other business in front of the board. The board is hereby adjourned. Thank you.